biotechnology is when the realm of life sciences merges with physical sciences, math and computers to create all the world's drugs, therapies and medical devices. You've certainly heard of it, but do you really know what it means? What could it do in the future? And what is it like as a career? To answer all these questions, today we're joined by Dr. Arun Shukla, one of India's leading biophysicists and a recipient of the Shanti Swaru Bhatnagar Award 2021. Let's get started. The first question I have for you, what exactly is biotechnology? How would you explain it to a 12 or 13 year old student? Very good. So uh, biotechnology, as the name suggests, it's a combination of biology and technology. Now biology, we all know how life forms work. And the technology component comes from uh, what are the methods, what are the approaches that we can utilize to understand them, to design uh, newer circuits, for example, or newer biology. So to give you a very simple example of biotechnology, which can connect to people, so people who are uh, diabetic, they have to take uh, insulin uh, from time to time. Now we can design um, the DNA in such a way that we can make bacteria, simple bacteria like E. coli, make uh, grams and grams and even kilograms of insulin, which we can purify a lot more easily without having uh, the requirement of any animal tissues per se. But if you think about it, you know, in a broader sense, all the drug discovery that is going on, it utilizes uh, one or the other aspect of biotechnology. Certainly, it seems like a very, very interesting field. Is it something that you've always wanted to study or did you end up changing in the middle? So um, I always had an interest in biology and I always had an interest in uh, research. And uh, this comes from my elder brother, who is uh, now a professor in physics. I did not switch uh, midway. I always had an interest in this. But uh, not to say that you cannot switch midway. There are many examples. There are uh, many colleagues. There are many students whom I know who are trained in hardcore physics or mathematics and switch to biology. So that is also uh, possible. And that is something where you can be even more uniquely positioned if your training is in computer science and if you want to uh, take biology. I mean, I really like the point that you've made over here because a belief that a lot of my friends and I myself for a, for a long time have had is that, you know, chemistry is supposed to be the central science and either bio or physics goes with chemistry. But bio and physics, like how does that work? So if you think about it, uh, these all different disciplines are uh, interconnected at such a fine level that more and more you dig uh, into this, you'll completely feel that, you know, you cannot really very uh, clearly separate what is physics, what is biology in terms of the principles that you're applying uh, in your studies or what we call uh, as research. So for example, um, if you, one of the things that we try to do in the lab uh, is we try to visualize how a protein looks like at its uh, atomic level. So as you know, uh, the proteins are made up of uh, amino acids, which are proteins are polymers of amino acids. Amino acids are made up of uh, these atoms, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen. Now, basically these atoms come together. So you can say these, this is chemistry. When they come together, they form amino acids, which are chemical structures. When amino acids come together, they form these protein molecules or polypeptide molecules. Now, if you want to study uh, or you want to visualize how their structure looks like, you have to use the principle of physics that uh, is called X-ray crystallography. Uh, and then once you have the structure, that is how these proteins look like, you want to utilize it for developing new drugs, then you use computational approaches which is again based on physics mathematics principle. You just see how chemistry, physics, biology, computer sciences, mathematics, these are all connected. If you want to understand a particular uh, you know, aspect, a molecule, a process, a phenomenon. And this is the beauty of science. That is why in a broader sense, I think uh, instead of being a physicist, a biologist, a chemist, we are all scientists because we're just trying to understand the scientific basis of these processes uh, using physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, computers, and whatnot. That's amazing. 
you know it's just like you start off in your early grades learning about sciences as a whole and then you go on to specialization and super specializations only to realize that it's just one thing again um what was your own experience of pursuing this you know what was the subject like for you what was the journey like so um you know i always feel that and even i'm getting goosebumps while uh, you know you asking me this question because i always felt that uh, research is what i wanted to do for uh, my entire life and then when i went to do uh, my masters in biotechnology uh, in jnu uh, that is where i was really hooked up so uh, when i got admission in jnu my parents were very happy because they knew that jnu is sort of you know a training center for civil services so they thought okay now it's all set you will go in uh, the civil services and i did what is referred to as summer internship or summer training in one of the labs in jnu you can visualize i mean i could visualize dna for the first time in the lab how it looks like on a gel so that is where i felt okay this is what i want to do and from there on uh, i have stayed with it in many cases when you discover something in the lab you are for a you know brief uh, period of time you are the first person and only person to know about this in the entire world and that feeling uh, you know is uh, ecstatic um this is where we feel that whatever we are doing we can make a little contribution maybe a small tiny tiny contribution to, towards societal societal benefit so whatever research it's not only in biotechnology but in other uh, areas as well and this is a feeling that is very difficult to describe of course it's a tiny tiny contribution but that feeling itself is you know uh, something which keeps us motivated and keeps us going when most teenagers right are making their career decisions um of course a feel being rewarding in the sense that it's satisfying it's exciting all of that is important but a really large consideration is how financially rewarding is it going to be many people say that if you want to be rich science is in the path to go down so i have uh, you know a different sort of take on this and um perhaps because i'm uh, an <laughs> eternal optimist i feel that uh, financially uh, these days there are supports from uh, government organizations where even during your masters your bachelors your phd you'll be getting a, a decent amount of fellowship and the number keeps uh, increasing more different types of fellowships are coming fellowships in different areas are coming so it's a respectful uh, sort of profession uh, so to say and financially also it's i would say quite stable um i personally feel that you know um we are paid very well and that is definitely there at all levels i believe phd post phd and also at uh, faculty level even if people decide to go to industry for example those who want to become uh, you know more in uh, industry setup or even start want to start their uh, companies that like start up and so on at least for me i can say that i am in uh, research for my own passion and my own drive and financially also it's i would say quite stable um i personally feel that you know um we are paid very well and that is definitely there at all levels i believe phd post phd and also at uh, faculty level even if people decide to go to industry for example those who want to become uh, you know more in uh, industry setup or even start want to start their uh, companies that like start up and so on at least for me i can say that i am in uh, research for my own passion and my own drive so for example if my salary was you know uh, half of what it is i would still happily do it uh, because i know that that much is enough to uh, support my family and at the same time i'm getting uh, sort of you know support to do what i really love to do so may to be very honest it's in most cases i can say and i can definitely say for myself that it's not the financial reward that you know we are so much looking into it's our passion it's our uh, drive that keeps us motivated so good to know actually i mean where would the world be without passionate scientists um what would you say are some of the future areas that biotechnology could be touching like you mentioned it's really important role in medicine today but what more could we see it do in say 20 years time so uh, you know the science uh, the beauty of science is that new areas new directions will keep emerging you know uh, 
every few years and uh, every year, so to say. But in terms of new areas, for example, I think this combination of uh, what people refer to as a large data, where you have a lot of data on a particular topic. Let's say if you have the sequence of the genomes of all people who are living in India, different people have different diseases, uh, you might start to understand, you know, what is causing a particular disease to happen, how we can sort of address that at the early age so that uh, the disease will not progress. And this is where the combination of high end technology such as, you know, genome sequencing, combining with computational analysis where you're trying to understand how this person is different from the next person and so on. This is something which is going to be uh, very powerful because based on this, we are entering the era of what we refer to as personalized medicine. So if person X goes to, the, to a doctor and person Y goes to a doctor, and they are both suffering from the same uh, disease source. It's not uh, necessary that they will be, both get the same treatment regimen. They might get different uh, uh, treatment regimen. The beauty is that uh, science keeps evolving. So uh, what do you think is not possible today? In five years, it could easily be possible and uh, it could easily be doable. Absolutely. Uh, what advice would you give to someone who's interested in science? So um, it, it might have already come out in my, uh, in my answers. So uh, one has to be curious, of course, one has to be motivated, but I think passion is the key. And you always have to look at the larger picture. It may seem like um, everything has been discovered in biology, so there's not much scope, but uh, I can tell you from my own experience and what we see every day in research, perhaps, you know, we are just at the tip of the iceberg. There's so much, uh, uh, you know, there's so much remains to be discovered going forward. This is Science Teens, where we meet experts and ask questions that can help you make the right study and career decisions in the sciences. I do this as a fellow student, and your support through a like and subscription will give me and everyone working on this channel a lot of encouragement.